The government is facing the charge of destroying institutions once again after the last two external members of the National Statistical Commission quit. One of them, the former chairman, has cited the two-month delay in releasing of a survey of employment in the country uh, as a reason for his decision to step down. The Ministry of Statistics and Programme Implementation that deals with this body has denied the charge, saying the members who quit didn't bring up any such issues in the last few meetings. Uh, to speak about why the resignation of these two external members is so significant, I'm uh, joined now by a BJP spokesperson uh, Gopal Agarwal and Congress spokesperson uh, Mohammad Khan. I will also be speaking to former Union Minister and Senior Economist uh, Y.K. Alag. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, I think um, since a political question has been raised uh, about these two resignations and that too so close to the next general election, the first question must go to you. It definitely doesn't look good uh, for the BJP that the last two external members of the NSC have quit saying that uh, they weren't given due consideration. Well, they, they may be accusing that has to be decided by ultimately uh, answered by the government. But what as a party we think is that the, the concerns with the government had were very well put to them that this kind of survey uh, have a limited with regard to what are the questions that have to be answered. Then with regard to what is the targeted uh, sample survey that has to be done, these kind of surveys have a strong limitations and do not, they do not at times put the right uh, uh, information and right perspective. That is the concern that the government had and it was conveyed, but their report has been taken uh, into consideration. What I would like to tell you is there is a big debate about the what you constitute as a job or employment. These are the uh, issues, unless you uh, clarify on those matters, then if you just take into uh, only the government employment, government jobs alone, so th these surveys are giving incomplete information and creating confusion. I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Agarwal. I'm, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, but it seems like it seems like that the data that has come about on employment and jobs is something which will hurt the government politically, and for political reasons, this data has been suppressed, and which is why very distinguished external no, members no, no. of this commission have said that we must speak out and they've quit. They're supposed to be ending their term in no. June 2020. No. They've quit. No, uh, uh, we cannot just be sure that this data will hurt the government in power. The issue is that when the data is incomplete, the survey uh, in itself, uh, uh, I think, is does not uh, come out properly with regard to what you consider as the job and employment. And it is an incomplete survey. Then itself, are some of the issues that have to be ultimately discussed and debated. They just cannot say that uh, we have come out with a report and uh, we are uh, and uh, whether it is uh, proper giving out all the issues or will it bring out the <coughs> true uh, perspective or uh, uh, can't true come perspective in. on okay. that? Okay, that's actually exactly what their job is, Mr. Agarwal. So I mean, I really don't know yes, what, what the point you're trying to make. Mohammad Khan, place. yes. Uh, uh, th my question to you is: uh, Is this um, uh, yes, a bit of an over exaggeration from uh, or overreaction from the Congress Party because we don't really know what is in any of those reports and um, the two things that have been cited as a reason for these resignations one of course is the GDP back series uh, and uh, the other one uh, is uh, this uh, NSSO jobs data we don't know what is in the jobs data I would not call it an exaggeration at all in fact I think we should all be very very concerned let us recap the CBI is in ruins today with the two senior most officers having fought with themselves in an inglorious manner which has given rise to a precedent that did not exist. The CVC's role is under question. For the first time, the Supreme Court has to appoint a judge to supervise the working of the CVC. The uh, government has seen four economic advisors resign under mysterious circumstances. Two RBI governors have left under dubious circumstances. No, I'm, I'm full credit to them. They did their job very, very well. And now this 
the, st uh, the statistics panel has lost two senior members. Ma'am, I think we all should be very concerned. This is a government that is a fascistic government that wants to destroy and undermine institutions. And that has been clear since day one. They cannot abide the idea of free speech. Just this week, Ms. Anjali Bhardwaj approached the Supreme Court on the issue of the election, uh, on the issue of the information commissioners. Out of 11 posts, 8 were vacant and when the Supreme Court intervened, they asked, they started to fill those posts. No, so, what so, did they do? So, they started no, so the manipulating that process as well, one, one nominating minute. people whose name was not even, who, yeah. nominating people who hadn't even applied. No, so Congress is making this a broader one. point about, you know, damage to institutions and that's an important one. But let's get very specific about why this is disconcerting and I'm joined Absolutely. by Mr. YK Alag. Uh, Mr. Alag, I think one point to focus on and which would be of concern is that if people and external members in the NSC um, quit saying that their data is not being put out, it's of greater concern because then it raises a question mark about the statistics, the official statistics that the Indian government puts out in a sense, doesn't it? Uh, from whatever I gather, I think some of this is very disturbing. Uh, please remember that our statistics, whether they are national account statistics or survey data, are used for many purposes, including assessments of the country's prospects by international aid agencies, including uh, uh, evaluation of loan projects, of, uh, of big projects, loans to big projects. And uh, Indian statistics have had a fairly good reputation. Maybe we don't have the same uh, lack of error as compared to the statistics of the G8 countries, but amongst developing countries, our statistics are supposed to be the best in the world. I've been a, a member and the chairman of the National Income Advisory Committee, as well as of the governing body of the NSSO. And I think it's extremely important that these basic institutions, facts, that we don't tamper with them, we give them uh, sanctity, that the bodies which have been set to approve a statistical machinery and a statistical result, that they are not at all uh, questioned or questions are raised about them. Please remember that the National Statistical Commission was set up uh, basically when I was member planning commission, Vijay Kelkar was uh, Secretary of Finance and we decided that this, we needed a body of this kind and we asked Rangarajan to chair a committee which designed it. Now, when you have these kinds of institutions which have been functioning for more than a decade, if you tamper with them, you create tremendous problems for the economy. So I must say that uh, I'm normally a very relaxed kind of person, but I find some of these things uh, somewhat disturbing. And I hope that the decision makers will take note of the kinds of discussion that we are having and will see to it that these things don't happen. The sooner we take care of it, the better it is going to be for the country. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, Mr. Gopal Agarwal, I think you should respond because this is not about a fight between the BJP and the Congress, though everything turns into a political issue uh, just, uh, you know, a few weeks before the election. But considering that this could harm uh, a whole lot of government functioning and the image that Indian statistics, the credibility of India's statistics, it's, it's a dangerous territory and the government and the BJP must answer. So therefore, I also consider, I am saying that when you uh, don't know why the government has held up the report, how can you just say that just because two people, uh, two persons from the commission have uh, cast aspiration or uh, are thinking that their report is being held and we don't have the proof or what is the go other side of the story that why the government has held up. Uh, uh, then we cannot come to a conclusion that the whole government is uh, not to be uh, believed and those uh, uh, their statement can be looked into. There must be definitely, there should have been some issues. Therefore, the government, uh, there is a delay. Ultimately, government, uh, earlier they came out with a report which the Niti Ayog and other institutions found to be not up to the uh, uh, expectation or not up uh, some deficit were formed. So uh, uh, that was out, but that had to be withdrawn. 
then a new report came so uh, how can you judge that now uh, the government is holding just because there are some issues with regard to performance of the government uh, definitely we know that the whole debate with uh, on jobs and employment has so many complexities we don't have the quality of job uh, data it, the, these surveys do not capture the whole criteria these are just uh, debates which are in the public domain as such we do not know why the government has not come out what is their issue with the government it is only one side of story and we should not conclude just uh, from one st statement or two people saying that yeah, but it's, uh, yeah our, i don't know I'm, I'm, going let, I'm, not, I'm going to let i'm going to let mr mohammed khan uh, rebut with his political point uh, to what gopal agarwal is saying yes, he is saying let's let the report come out ma'am can i respond to him yeah or the government let the government yeah, i have the following to say to you after four and a we half years actually four al the, uh, after almost five years series. the following is very clear this government has two very undesirable qualities one it is petrified of scrutiny and two it cannot tolerate any amount of questions being asked you their conduct in parliament or their absence thereof is clear evidence of this now aside from being aside from these two qualities they also an incompetent government they cannot control and they cannot effectively manage institutions they cannot effectively manage ministries they have effectively wiped out jobs forget their reports the cmie published a report this year where they pointed out 1.1 crore jobs have been lost forget them adding those promised 2 crore jobs in unhone to jo thi unko to has ne has kar diya aur khatam kar diya so this government has to be voted out of power at the earliest that is why they are trying desperately to cling to power today and that is why these people are listening to the voice of their conscience and they are not the first they literally the 8th or 9th uh, uh, office holders under this government who've chosen to walk away from this disaster and train wreck and i'll finally say this look any government that doesn't believe it is no, answerable no, no, to the people uh, and uh, keeps Mr. coming Khan, up with defensive and delusional what, what uh, answers is doesn't have a good is not fit to rule this country no I, you have to vote them you, out of power you, it is as yeah, simple can, as can i just say something yes very quickly please no i want to say yeah the, i want to say that just simply the two persons have resigned and they are saying that our report is being withheld you cast aspirations and intentions of the whole government and when even the supreme court in the congress time talks about that the congress uh, has put cbi as a caged parrot and still they they, they say that we are uh, who are protecting the uh, institutions the way the uh, congress manipulated you know, the Agarwal, situation I, I don't know if i were you i would definitely so not I bring up cbi you. as an example of institutions because i i i no, mean, if i were you i wouldn't bring you, that example up because you, the cbi director the former cbi director no, has gone to court and in a signed uh, statement has told the yes, supreme court that the, you know what is that the, the government in like cases you are pursuing Okay wait I no, want to I want to come to Mr Alal accountability one minute I no, want to come to Mr Alal we are creating accountability of the institutions okay. what is the issue is that these institutions at point of time had come out with this uh, okay. uh, systems that they were not accountable to uh, the public okay the, when there is accountability they don't find well, this is not accountability is today must be one minute i want to come to mr alag on an important point today the statement from must be is that both of these people these members who have quit the external members never brought up any issues during any of the previous meetings on uh, the gdp um, uh, back series data issue they say that uh, these two members are the ones uh, who wanted or the nsc is the one who wanted uh, the new uh, series released so they've largely denied any such thing do you think that a complete investigation is required to go into what has happened uh, and is there more to it than just two members saying that hey we weren't happy with a, uh, you know a report not being released and that's why we've quit what is the significance of this and how significant one sec mr alag mr alag well i well there are established procedures listen i mean you know the national sample survey of india is an example of sample surveys for the world it has one of the largest samples of household data conducted anywhere in the world there is the central sample and there are state samples and then the reports go through a complete search process of professional scrutiny and the statistical commission is an autonomous body consisting of experts 
now you know i really don't want to get in. it is election time and i'm not i have been a former minister but i'm basically a professional economist so i don't want to get into involved in these kind of jhagras they can carry on as far as they please but we should not tamper with national income statistics and the processes of approving national income statistics and we should most certainly not tamper with the national with the nss the nss is one of the most important sources of facts of truth if there is any such thing that exists now you may not like something you in fact you have not even read the report maybe it says some very nice things but simply because you know it belongs and listen people don't you know if a if a if a employment study has been done in a period where we went through some of the problems with the those have been discussed by many people by the governor of the reserve bank by the reserve bank's annual reports so why is all there all of a sudden a sensitivity to the national sample survey which has been producing reports for the last 50 years and some of the finest statistics of the developing countries the un statistical commission praises and statistics we have all of a sudden discovered doubts i don't know what the exact story is but if doubts have been expressed on the process with which an nss report is approved to me that is a very sad day i simply speak as a professional economist as somebody who has been the chairman of the national income advisory committee who has been on the board of the national sample survey who has chaired the process of what is called the section 81 committee which give annual budget of the indian statistical institute to the parliament of india i don't want to talk about all of this but you know this is a sad event absolutely i say this as a professional economist no you know somebody and, and, who has and, been a past president and mr alag is not metric society. you know it's not it's not just uh, it's not just the employment report there was a controversy over the gdp numbers a few months ago one set of numbers was put out by this organization then withdrawn then another set put out um, you know one of the members has been quoted as talking about uh, the, uh, you know what the role of the niti aayog is in all of this um, do you think that 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 is part of the problem the role that the niti aayog is playing in the current scenario as far as statistics is concerned and what it does for the credibility of indian statistics when something like a gdp series starts getting a question mark after it well again there the process the sudipto mandal committee was an expert group committee it's not the first express group Com, uh, expert committee such committees have been there all the time revision of statistics is suggested to them sudipto mandal is a very distinguished economist quantitative economist he had some very fine statisticians on his committee official statisticians also that committee gave a report now normally such reports are never tampered with but in this case i am told that that is now let's be fair to the niti aayog it is true that the former planning commission of the government of india because statistics was a part of the ministry of planning the ministry of planning one wing was the planning commission the other was the ministry of statistics you know one is a professional level which is the deputy chairman of the planning commission and now the deputy chairman of the niti aayog whether it's arvind panagriya my friend arvind panagriya or my friend rajiv kumar but on the other hand uh, you have the planning commission never enter in the deeds it is the statistics department would just send it to them together with the department of economic affairs which writes the economic survey if they have any professional comments but finally it is the department of statistics and the which is now the statistical commission which has the right to approve that so again these traditions are traditions which we should not tamper with because after a certain stage we don't know what is the truth if we keep on tampering with the ways of measuring rods if the yardstick keeps on changing which is the world in which we are going to live apart from that it has serious implications 
for the country's economy. Remember, UN agencies, World Bank agencies, they are all looking at these statistics. They write country reports. Those reports get fed into the big investment projects that either the big corporate, other thinking, term lending institutions are thinking of making in India. So if we start tampering with measuring rods, we are doing damage to the economy. This has to be clearly understood. There are some things which have to be above controversy. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for uh, explaining to us the implication That's of this. The important point is. Yes. Yes, Mr. Agarwal. No, I just, uh, 10 seconds more. That's the important thing that Mr. Alag has pointed out. But you just cannot uh, depend on two persons' opinion and say that the whole uh, thing is... is but Mr. Akarwal, it's not it's just any two it. persons. It's not just random two persons. It's the last two independent members of that committee who have quit, including the chairperson. If they were so un... You know, so they, they, random therefore we should and wait for the other, why was he other, made the chairman? No, no. Why was Mr. Mohanan no, made the then, chairman? Then we if his view wait. doesn't count. Ah, so that, no, they count and therefore the other point of view, why the government will answer why... Uh, they, it is holding and why they have resigned. They have answered. Simply, there is a long no. explanation which has come from Aspi today, which doesn't really give any answers. They say, oh, if there was a problem, they should have brought it up earlier. That's the sum and substance of the Aspi yeah, answer. There is no and, uh, answer. Earlier, there was a problem in the... There, uh, uh, earlier, when there was a problem with the GDP series, the Niti Ayog had given the, all the queries that were raised by them. It's not so supposed to be their job. It's not supposed to be their job is what Mr. Alag is saying. No, anyway, is. I'm going to end this discussion here with the hope, with the hope that there is no long-term damage to institutions such as the NSC. It's not about one election. It's not about two parties. It is something that can have far-reaching effects that goes beyond the politics of the day. With that, I want to thank all the participants in the panel and all of you for watching.